Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, another engine. Probably tired of seeing new engines, but that's okay. Uh, this particular engine, Buffalo Forge Company, Buffalo, New York. Uh, generator mounted, steam powered, automatic. In other words, uh, the, it don't have a flyball governor. It's actually got an automatic governor in the flywheel. And, you know, most of them were high-speed engines. And this is 350 RPM. Uh, what it's rated at uh, 140 amps 125 volts. I think that works out to about 17.5 kW or something like that so we're figuring 25 horsepower and uh, The generator is actually made by uh, Triumph Electric company out of Cincinnati, Ohio so We're gonna date this thing somewhere between 1897 and 1922 and I couldn't say whether it's the earlier or the later you know anywhere through there I guess it could be but you know I don't think it's 1800s it's the, uh, the teens I would think uh, 19 teens but like I said no newer than a 22 and this engine uh, really really nice engine uh, high quality and a lot of pride put into the manufacturing of this engine as you can see, there was a lot of nickel plating on this thing. Uh, you can see the crank cover. This is an enclosed crank, so uh, it actually had oil in the inside the crankcase. And you had a sight glass here. It was nickel plated. You had a drain here, which was nickel plated. Uh, the nuts, they're sort of an acorn style nut that held the engine to the original base. Or they're actually nickel plated also. Uh, all of the uh, drip oilers were nickel. And uh, like I said, they just took a lot of pride in it. This was, uh, of course, another drip oiler that went in and it went around and this is what uh, oiled your eccentric, which was a pretty neat. And it's got a drain here for any oil that drips out to go into. And now this was in a barn in Pennsylvania, so it was never out in the weather. And even though, you know, it may look like it, it's never been in the weather engine is not stuck I have turned the engine so I don't see any issues with running and as you can see you can see some of the nickel left on these bolts uh, this is the company Motors and Sun this was a company electrical engineers in York Pennsylvania that probably sold this engine and I would say or they could have bought it reconditioned it then sold it you know sometime after it was built and sold originally uh, pinstriping, a lot of pinstriping. Uh, you can see there was a black pinstripe here. There was three pinstripes right there. I'm sure the head probably had pinstriping. Uh, I can see some black, yeah, pinstriping around the head. So we're going to try to document all of that because this may be one that we redo. They actually uh, pinstripe the generator, and the yellow, I guess, is going to be the original paint because there's nothing under it. Uh, pinstripe around the flywheel Pinstripe line around the generator as you can see somebody's got some looks like flat black over it, but And then more pinstripe in here and then a lot of pinstriping with some X's on the flywheel Okay, I see it X and then it comes up to a point. That's really a neat look and then uh, some more on the cylinder on this side. So a really, you know, high-end engine. Uh, you can see all these valves was nickel plated. Of course, that nut was nickel plated. So this would be a really, really good engine to re uh, run uh, Christmas lights on. And if we can get it fired up and running and generating power, which I think we can, Unless there was something major wrong with it, and I doubt that. Uh, usually this stuff is just put up. Now, I'm not sure on the wiring. We'll have to get a, a Doozer Dan to help me out on this. He's an electrical engineer. And uh, I'm assuming, uh, of course you can see the coatings off, but there's two big wires coming out and a small wire. And this is just supposed to be a uh, single phase 125 volt. So. 
but uh, I'm assuming that that's just the wires there and that's all we need but I don't know you know there's way more brushes on this one than my other one I don't know that you need an exciter for this uh, I just can't honestly say how it works I wish I knew but uh, you know I'll learn all I can learn about it when I go anyway I just wanted to show you this one this is a neat little engine it weighs 5,000 pounds or 4,900 and something pounds we weighed it uh, a good friend of mine brought it down he lives in well he used to work for me he was one of my employees for a lot of years and he went up to uh, uh, Maryland to take over his dad's business and he's been doing that for uh, six years maybe something like that but uh, he uh, went up to do that so he drove up from Maryland to Pennsylvania to pick it up and then he uh, brought it down to me yesterday and he's come down for a visit so it worked out really well now that's 5,000 pounds that engine right there which looks to be way bigger is 4,100 pounds so you know that tells you one thing is that generator is really heavy and uh, all that windings and copper uh, and you know the base is heavier of course that one's on the base also and uh, I've got a little bit of video about this one also coming up. This is actually a uh, Chicago pneumatic air compressor steam engine. And then everything else is just, you know, steam engine. And it's just got a rod that runs through the piston for the steam engine. And instead of having a regular head, it's got a head like the back head. And it's got another rod coming through to the piston for the air compressor. And this one, this one I'm pretty sure is stuck. I haven't turned it or hadn't tried hard to turn it. But, uh, you know, this is just, it's just a neat engine. I saved it from scrap, so there'll be more on it later also. So, anyway, I wanted to show you this one. I really, really like this engine. I'd love to have this thing back, you know, like it was when it was new with the, with the pinstripes and paint. And, uh, you can see the bows. I've never had anybody really just tell me, hey, look, this stuff was pinstripe, but I know the wagons of uh you know late 1800s and mid 1800s up through there was pinstriped they've done a lot on different stuff and i've seen a lot of hit and miss engines that had some on it if they were high end uh, i don't think anybody has went through this thing and restored it and had it set up for a show or anything uh and you know not in the last hundred years or so so i mean i wouldn't think that uh this was an unoriginal paint job you know there's nothing under the yellow uh, I'm pretty sure that that was original and I know they it very well could have been and uh, the pinstriping is really nice on this a lot of time taken you know just to do the pinstripes so and I'm not really good at it but I would attempt it you know just because I want it done so okay folks fixing the storm I got some a uh, little bit more information on this engine this Buffalo uh, Forge Company engine with the Triumph generator okay I am not really up on generators uh, not nothing like I would like to be but I'm learning so if you can see this okay I do know that that is not a slip ring that's a commutator so this is actually a DC 125 volt 8 pole generator I guess 8 pole because there's 8 sets of brushes uh, and it's my understanding that this is an adjustment uh, that would be adjusted if you put a heavy load on you may or may not have to adjust it to get the voltage right but uh, we are going to try really hard to get this thing working uh, it's not stuck I was able to turn the engine uh, I didn't want to turn it much I just turned it actually uh, by the flywheel by hand uh, enough to to make sure that it would move uh, I had already pulled the head off and checked it and I didn't see any problems inside the cylinder the piston looked really good so it didn't bother me to try to turn it and uh, let me see we've got some wires on the brushes that are there's a couple of these that are busted loose need a little work I'm sure you know all the brushes need taken out and everything needs cleaned uh, I sort of like the spring load set up on it we'll have to just check everything out really well uh, everything looks good this thing was in a barn it wasn't out in the weather or anything like that so I'm guessing that we can probably make this work and 
with it being a DC 125 volt I can still run my Christmas lights I want to run uh, I want to decorate a few things up around here including the crane and actually run them on steam and I've got that 25 horsepower boiler that we're working on now I've just got to get an injector now uh, it's past the uh, pressure test the hydro test at 225 we're going to run 100 psi in it but uh, this thing is rated at 80 psi uh, 350 rpms and it will do uh, well 100, 125 volts but 140 amps and we're figuring you know between 15 and 17 and a half kw so this should do any christmas lights that i can come up with but we're going to run uh incandescent lights you know even the big ones or the small ones you just can't run led with with this even though leds are dc they have a diode i assume that changes them over or uh, I, I would think a rectifier would be what changes it over but i don't know nothing about them i just know that from what, I, what i've read it won't won't work so I do know that we need a panel for this with gauges and I've got some gauges I'm going to show you here in a minute that I had actually picked up uh, another project but we're going to use them on here and I need a way of adjusting the voltage that's probably for uh, Doozer Dan to figure out for me but uh, but I'll show you the gauges either way all right for anybody that's wondering what happened to the uh, uh, yeah the cedar wood I just threw together a picnic table with it. So it's pretty good. Right. Okay, this is DC voltage. And uh, we'll do up to what, 100 and I guess 150 volts. So we just need to be able to do 125. And uh, this is a really nice big gauge that would have been on a uh, probably a DC generator originally. And then we have an amp gauge, which goes to 400, and that is amps, direct current, DC. So both of these are set up for DC, DC voltmeter. And uh, so that's what we'll be using on that. Really nice gauges. So Okay, so hopefully by Christmas we'll be under steam power and, uh, well, let's say after Thanksgiving and have uh, this generator generating all right appreciate everybody watching till next time bye